Housing prices rise as cost of population increases. Biden and the Republican Party fight to control Congress. And Britain's Prime Minister Liz Truss resigns. That and more today on APSU TV News. Welcome to the latest episode of APSU TV News. I'm Alan Barty with your weekly news update. Home buyers are not the only group affected by a hot housing market, as rental prices are also climbing to record highs in Clarksville. Clarksville now reports several factors are driving up rental prices, but the population growth is among the leading cause. The Clarksville population has skyrocketed over the last 10 years. The population is expected to keep growing as economic development continues and more jobs are made available. As Clarksville works to accommodate a growing population, more housing will be needed to meet the increasing demand and combat rising prices. President Joe Biden promised on Tuesday that the first bill he sends to Capitol Hill next year will be the one that writes abortion protections into law if Democrats control enough seats in Congress to pass it. Biden urged people to remember how they felt in late June when the Supreme Court overturned the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade, ruling that legalized abortion. Opponents of abortion rights also seek to capitalize on the high stakes issue. Marjorie Dan N. Filser said in the interview with the AP Wire that, quote, doubling down on extreme agenda of abortion on demand until birth won't stop Democrats from losing power in Congress, end quote. Biden repeatedly criticized Republicans nationwide who have pushed for restrictions on the procedure, often without exceptions, and told Democrats in attendance that, quote, if you care about the right to choose, then you got to vote, end quote. It's a political earthquake in the United Kingdom. Prime Minister Liz Truss resigning now set to become Britain's shortest serving prime minister ever. The direction of America's closest ally has thrown into chaos as officials here in the U.S., including President Joe Biden, recently voiced unease over her version, I'm sorry, over her vision for the U.K. Mike Falillo has the latest. To her growing list of critics, it was simply a matter of no trust in the trust government. Just one day after British Prime Minister Liz Truss said she wasn't leaving 10 Downing Street. Mr. Speaker. I am a fighter and not a quitter. Tress resigned less than two months after the late Queen Elizabeth II asked her to form a government. I recognize though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. She's now set to become the shortest serving prime minister in British history. Her proposed tax cuts for the wealthy as middle class Britons face a bleak winter of economic hardship sent the British pound into a tailspin. The government has since walked back its tax plan. Fellow Conservative members of Parliament are now looking to steady the ship. We're not playing the role that we usually play on the international stage with the world getting more dangerous, not less. It's been very, very difficult. President Joe Biden saying he's not concerned about potential economic instability in the UK spilling over into the US days after he publicly called Truss's trickle-down economic vision a mistake outside the White House this morning. Look, she was a good partner on Russia and on Ukraine, and, uh, and the British are going to solve their problems, and the, but she was a good partner. As for what's next, Britain's Conservative Party says it will have a new party leader and therefore the next prime minister ready by next Friday. But the opposition Labour Party is calling foul and wants an early nationwide general election. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Several British lawmakers tussle for support next Friday to become the country's next leader following the implosion of Liz Truss' historical short-lived government. Former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who despite resigning in disgrace just a few months ago, is among them. Johnson has not even declared he is running, but bookmarkers have made him one of the favorites to win. Despite being forced out just over three months ago, Johnson is still adored by some conservatives as a vote winner with a rare common touch who led the party to a big election victory in 2019. Those who are against Johnson believe this would be a, would be a step in the wrong direction. 
Labor leader Kurt Starman said, quote, this is doing huge damage to our economy and the reputation of our country, end quote. That's all we have for news today. We'll be right back with the weather after the break. What a disaster. <laughs> You're a disaster. This is a disaster. You can't be ready for every little disaster, but you can prepare for a big one. Make an emergency plan today. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. My Shiro doesn't always wear a cape, but she always has time for a hug, a smile, for going the extra mile. My Shiro stretches every dollar, puts in long hours, puts others first. But now it's your time, Mom. When you're ready to retire, we want you to be able to enjoy it. It's time to start saving now. A free three-minute online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org slash Shiro. You want change. You want a community that supports you. You want the knowledge it takes to make a difference in this world. It's time to be more. It's time to be better. It's time to grow. The world you want to see starts with you. The life you want begins at Austin P. State University. Learn more at APSU.edu. Good afternoon. I'm Madeline Stubblefield here with your weather. Let's get into today. Today it is 73 degrees with the wind blowing south at 10 miles per hour. I don't know about y'all, but it went from 30 degrees to 70 and I am not feeling it. So let's get in tonight. So tonight it'll be in the high 50s, what we're used to. So you might want to bring a little jacket with the wind blowing south at nine miles per hour and a little bit chance of rain. Let's get into the week. So this weekend, of course, it'll be in the high 70s in the mid 50s. So perfect to go out to the pumpkin patch, get out, do your activities with your family. And then let's get into next week. Next week, we will have the high 70s again and the, a little bit of lower of the 50s because it'll be a little chilly because Tuesday there's a chance of rain. And I'll be back for sports. <laughs> After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Welcome to Inside the Sports Zone. I am Madeline Stubblefield here to give you all insights of things Austin P Sports. Let's first give a wrap up last weekend for the Govs. Last Saturday, the men's and women's cross country team went down to Evansville, Indiana. The women continued the streak by coming in second place for the second straight meet. Three Govs finished in the top 10. Runners Michaela Smith, Kara Marsh, and Hallie Mattingly led the way for Austin P. What a great way to wrap up the season before the A Sun Championship next Saturday in Huntsville, Alabama. Good luck, ladies. The men finished in fourth place, but Connor Duncan stepped up and took first place for the whole Invitational. The men will be looking to continue competing as they go into the A-Sun Championship next Saturday as well. Good luck, guys. As you can see from these highlights, Austin Peay saw action this Saturday as it was a military appreciation at Forterra Stadium and a big Gov win against the big rivalry, Murray State. The Govs continued the racers' losing streak with a win of 52-17 as Austin P held Murray State scoreless in the second half. 
the Govs will be looking to continue the momentum as they play next Saturday against Jacksonville, Alabama. Sunday afternoon was a battle of the defense for the Austin Peay soccer team as they battled it out with Florida Gulf Coast. Goalie Chloe Dion showed the defensive power as she earned her season high with six saves. However, shots were not sliding in to correlate with the strong defense for the Govs. Austin P will look to finish the season strong as they take on Queens and Charlotte, North Carolina on Saturday. Good luck, ladies. We will also see the women's Tennessee tennis season wrap up with the Intercollegiate Tennessee Association Ohio Valley Regionals. Dang, that's a long one. This week and going on to next week, Yesterday, two Govs win their single matches along with all four of the double matches winning. Keep up the good work, Govs. However, the Govs volleyball team has a couple weeks left in their season and will look to start a winning streak and come back after three tough losses tonight against Central Arkansas. Good luck, Govs. Don't worry, even though the fall sports season is coming close to an end and we can feel the weather changing, we are getting sneak peeks of the spring sports as the women and men's basketball team gave us a preview at Gov's Madness last night, which I got to go to for a little bit. The atmosphere was so uplifting for the basketball teams and a good amount of the fan base supported, which will help push them through this season. We will also see an insight into the women's softball team this weekend at the, as the inner squad Red and Black World Series scrimmages. Next week will be a slow week for Austin P. however, as we'll see the men's tennis team, women's volleyball team, and both cross-country teams on the road. But for Terrace Stadium, we'll see action against Jacksonville State for the last home game of the season. So go out and be loud. And that's all for this week in Austin P. Sports, but tune in next week to hear all things sports. Remember to go out and support the Govs. I'm Madeline Stubblefield, and that's all we have here this week in Stashville. Wherever you see a flower, a bird, a beautiful tree, know that my love is with you as you bring our colorful stories to the world. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one, discovertheforest.org. The black truck? Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. But yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're gonna get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm gonna get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. Hear the sounds of the spooky season at the APSU Percussion Halloween Concert. Performers will take the stage in the concert hall in the Music and Mass Communication Building on, the six, in, on 601 College Street. The concert will be on October 28th at 6 in the evening. If you need more information, email David Steinquest at steinquestd at apsu.edu. A local park will soon be swimming with life for all visitors to enjoy. Plans are in motion for the construction of an aquarium in the Wade Bourne Nature Center in Rotary Park. According to the Montgomery County Parks and Reconstruction, I'm sorry, Department, the tank will be the tank will hold 450 gallons of water and be home to many local species of fish. The nature center opened in October of 2020 and promotes construct construction and the nature education for all ages while connecting visitors with the environment. The project is scheduled to be completed by April of 2023. That's all today. That's all the time we have for today. Be sure to follow us at Facebook at APSU TV, Clarksville and Instagram on APSU underscore TV. Thanks for watching and as always, let's go pee.